I had heard <laughs> that there was this doctor who could give you a hair as thick as Brad Pitt's and he would he would stab you in the head repeatedly with a <laughs> syringe and he would inject God knows what, uh, you know, uh, chicken egg serum or something. And I was going to this guy and uh, I was doing it for like two years or something. And I was like, and then finally I was like, what am I doing? What's up, guys? Derek Moore, PlaceMoreDates.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Dax Shepard and his hair loss prevention protocol, particularly injections and finasteride. So I actually did a video on Ashton Kutcher's use of dutasteride for over a decade, and that video was uh, pretty well received and was pretty popular. And interestingly enough, Dax Shepard had Ashton Kutcher on his podcast fairly recently to... Uh, I guess it wasn't that recent, but in the, uh, you know, since the conception of the podcast, he had him on as a guest relatively recently, and they went over hair loss prevention drugs, and Ashton described, you know, coming off the dutasteride, much like I talked about in my first video, and Dax then went on to say um, how surprised he was that Ashton came off, and how he has been using finasteride for years as well. Oh, no. I've got this receding like, hairline. No, 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 you no, know no. about it. Well, I told listen, you all listen. about it. I didn't want to ask you about that because you've gone off of Propecia. Yeah, gone. I just I'm completely off. So risky of you. I, I don't I, know what I want. Can I can I out us for this? I just want to say that we. Uh, I'll just say I went to a doctor. I had heard <laughs> that there was this doctor who could give you a, a hair as thick as Brad Pitt's. And he would he would stab you in the head repeatedly with a <laughs> syringe, and he would inject God knows what, uh, you know, uh, chicken egg serum or something. And I was going to this guy, and uh, I was doing it for like two years or something. And I was like, and then finally I was like, what am I doing? I'm going. This guy's jabbing my head with a needle. Nothing's happening. And but I did do that. There's this. I I I participated in all in all of these things. That anything. Well, to, no, I will. I I think we both went to this. No, doctor, we, right? I think yeah. I recommended yeah. the guy to you. What are you talking about? And then my, my my whole thing was remember I didn't like they would put a numbing spray on your yes. head. And then I I got off on the fact that I was like no numbing spray. Listen, I felt I felt <laughs> sissy enough to even be there getting this thing done. I thought I, the only bit of masculinity I could retain is that I'd go no numbing spray. I've gone off of anything to re re retain. My, so when I was, I started getting very concerned when I was about 25 that, <laughs> sure. that it was going. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. it's Mad going. Dash. And I'm 25. I've got my, you know, I yeah. have to maintain. Yeah, it's and scary. so that's when I went on the Avidart. Uh -huh. And then, and I started to go see the guy that would did the, the needle. Just stab your head. And a I was just times. like, in about, I think like five years ago or something, I was like, I, I can't, I, I, I can't do the you gotta guy. You got to get off the treadmill. Like, I can't do the guy. So, yeah, I, yeah. so I stopped doing the guy and I was like, oh, I'm hanging in there. Right? Yeah, right. And then when I had kids, I didn't know what the side effects of this Avidart stuff were mm -hmm. relative to like having children. Like, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to stop. So I stopped and I did really good for like a year. Uh -huh. And then it just now it's starting to like, you it's know. Thinning out yeah, a little it's bit. Out. But, <laughs> but here's. <laughs> so what's the solution? More hats or back on Avidart? No, I'm not. I'm just. You're I'm, never going to go back on. Propecia. No, I'm just. So here's it's what. It's so I, reckless. Of so you. here's what happened. I'm still on it, by the way. I went in and and I quit using it, and uh -huh. I went into my doctor, and my testosterone levels were like alarmingly low. Uh huh. And it's because I'd quit using the stuff. So th this. Oh, interesting, because it is a testosterone inhibitor, Propecia well, and Avidar. Yeah. So there's, DHT. Yeah. So yeah. so it removes the DHT, yeah. which is a byproduct is of testosterone, which actually kills follicle. the follicles. Yeah. So it removes it. So your body, in response to that, makes more, makes more testosterone. Oh, because sure. your body's using DHT for something. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, yeah, we we yeah. still don't know all this. Right. So, so your body starts dumping more and more testosterone. Oh. So then you go off of it, right? Uh -huh. And your body goes, "Oh, I don't need all of this testosterone." Yeah, I have tons And so then of DHT. it dumps your testosterone into Ooh. the cellar, uh -huh. which then keeps your hair for a really nice, really nice for like oh. a year, right? Because now you have drastically right. reduced testosterone levels. Right, right, right. right. So then gradually, your prostate's tiny and healthy. And gradually your testosterone levels start to increase okay. and then the hair starts to go. So now I'm in, at the hair starting to go, but I'm, I, I've actually become comfortable with that as well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm just good with it's it. It's so healthy. I, well, I got kids now. Yeah. You know? Okay. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the hair procedure that you and Ashton both <laughs> did. Okay, great. I that found a little information that on we that. we don't. Well, even I asked that doctor, what the fuck are you in, injecting into my scalp? Uh -huh. and, and he wouldn't tell me. Yeah, it was a proprietary 
situation. He didn't want the secret serum to be known. Because I think you labeled it a chicken egg serum (laughs) on the podcast. (laughs) What does that even mean? I don't know. You tell me. Um, So I have a question. When you went, did they dry your blood? No. Oh, so this must be an advanced version that I was <laughs> that I looked at. Again, I think I was pretty clear. I think it was probably <laughs> hocus pocus. No, this is a real thing. Oh, okay. I found a lot of information on it actually. Okay. It's called um PRP, platelet rich plasma. Does that sound right? <laughs> that sounds way more high tech than what so I maybe think I was just getting. Evolved since maybe you were an early adopter. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But it's a stel- a stem cell treatment. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, now I'm excited that I should look into that because that sounds legit. Yeah. They draw blood. They and spin it. They put it through a centrifuge separation process. Uh-huh. And then you get this plasma. Mm-hmm. And then they apply that plasma to the scalp. And yeah, they use like a... Oh, oh, PRP. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. So I have had that on my wrist. Oh. Yeah. And you've had it Ricky, on your head. Ricky Glassman's a big proponent of it for his knees from playing basketball, and he recommended oh. it might be beneficial for my wrist uh, because of my arthritis. Got and it. Uh, it wasn't for me, which is not to say it wouldn't be for you. Mm. Yeah. PRP. Interesting. And did they stab? Did it stab you? They use like a little machine with. They needles. drew a bunch of blood, uh-huh. and then yeah, they they put it in a centrifuge, and uh, and then I guess we had plasma, and then he also put some stem cells in there too that uh-huh. he had gotten, and um, yeah, and then just kind of uh, uh, sprayed it all over my joint. You know, he. Oh, we made it into a paste. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, it was in it was in a syringe. Oh, okay. But it was okay. far less than what I had donated blood wise. Uh-huh. And then he he got into those joints with a very long needle and was just to me haphazardly squirting that plasma all in the joint. Sure. And while it was happening, I was like, I, I, I don't know. Well, maybe. And then turns out I'm just generally a little skeptical. I will try everything, but I'm skeptical while I'm doing it. Got it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's I think what was happening to you. Mm, I, it wasn't because what? I didn't draw. I, I never gave blood. Well, maybe they used something else because they didn't have I think blood this at that guy time. Was, well, if they used blood, he was probably like, uh, like voodoo style, cutting a chicken's neck in the back. <laughs> See, and, this is where the chicken. <laughs> this is where your chicken idea comes from. So, as far as what the injections were in particular, it wasn't really disclosed in the entire podcast. So. Whether, but it was years ago. So whether that was, it sounds like it was not PRP. It doesn't sound like it was exosomes or stem cells. It's kind of unclear exactly what it was. But frankly, I don't even think it's really worth investigating because injection wise, there's nothing really worth noting that I have seen that's incredibly promising other than mesotherapy with certain compounds that are actually proven as efficacious orally already that we already use and deploy or topically apply. So the injection, I don't really know what Dax is referring to there, but notably he's been using finasteride for years and it sounds like it's a lot more commonplace among celebrities than some might think. And frankly, I don't, you know, I don't think that's very surprising, though, because I think a lot of celebrities live and die by their hair. So they're going to be getting hair systems. They're going to be getting extensive transplants. They're going to be using whatever they can to sustain what's on their head. And there's so many actors like 50 plus years old with Norwood zeros. And it's just like it's so unrealistic that there's no way these guys are not, you know, implementing significant methods of maintenance whether that be pharmacological intervention or and or transplants and or hair systems i think it's probably like pretty extensive with some of these guys you have guys like matthew mcconaughey who's gone from like severely balding to like perfect hair at above middle age at this point he's you know shown that even in his early acting career he was far gone and now he's like back to like below, like literally baseline, like it's impossible. So at least it's impossible based on the information that a celebrity like him would have presented to him. There's no way his, you know, like regenics thing that he talks about has anything to do with it. That's what I got. I was losing my hair in 99. No. What do you yes, mean? Yes, I was. And yes, then what was. happened? I started rubbing my head with this stuff called Regenex and damn if I didn't bring it back. Is that true? <gasps> That's true. Kidding. I had a silver dollar right here. No. And I got a funny story because yes. um oh my God, he's got the I talked to this solution. Just, I, I talked just to this, wrote that down. <laughs> I talked to this guy. Yeah. What's the title of the doctor who does who works on hair? 
uh, uh, who does transplant systems. Uh, 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 I don't know, whatever that title would be. Yeah. I run into this guy in Beverly Hills, and he goes, I have been wanting to, to, to meet you because I go to this conference every year. And over the last 10 years, we always put you on the screen and, uh, as a great hair transplant no! example, right? And he goes, for six years, nobody ever raised their hand to say it was them. And the last three years, there's this doctor from Sweden who takes credit for it. And he goes, and I was like, oh, he's full of BS. He goes, can I look at your scalp? And he looks at it, he goes, you don't have hair transplants. Yeah. I'm going to bust this man next year at the, yeah. uh, the convention. Good. Yeah, so, Gosh, yeah. I hate that. That's, Unbelievable. That's I bet he got some good work. I bet I he got some sure. jobs off Seriously, of it. Seriously. No, so this scale. is my hair. Yeah. That's all you <laughs> He very likely is using a hair system or had an elaborate transplant. And I think it's probably more likely a hair system. But, you know, with that being said, there are obviously celebrities that hang on to their hair via just pharmacology and it seems like dax is one of those individuals who is heavily reliant on finasteride monotherapy and has had fair success over the years as far as how his hair is held up in 2020 his interviews he still looks pretty good he has a bit of like a swooping like comb over things so you can't really see how receding he is he might have had some work done on the hairline it's hard to say for sure because Honestly, I don't follow this actor, so it's kind of, I don't really follow actors in general. I just do research for these videos once in a while. But um, his hair looks like he still has hair on his head, and I think it, uh, it looks pretty damn good considering that he is 45 years old, and clearly he is, you know, prone to male pattern baldness, or else he wouldn't have started finasteride in the first place. So it's been working well and uh, whatever he's doing is uh, working for him, and it's just another indication that... Uh, widespread 5 alpha reductase inhibitor use is pretty uh it's pretty common even among celebrities and it is a you know efficacious treatment option i don't believe it's a form of monotherapy that is going to be sufficient to stave off loss permanently for most individuals i think it can stave off loss for a couple decades for some but in the grand scheme of things you're going to have to deal with receptor activation via androgens not just the DHT component of 5-alpha reduction from testosterone to DHT. There are other endogenous androgens that need to be accounted for and handled in some capacity, in some method. Regardless of how you go about doing that, you can't just leave them unaddressed if you want to actually halt miniaturization in its tracks and not just sweep up a chunk of DHT and then leave a residual amount continuing to progress your androgenic alopecia in conjunction with the spike in scalp tea and all the other endogenous androgens that are being produced in your body. So yeah, a bit off track there, but that is another actor using finasteride. It's not dutasteride like Ashton, but it is still notable nonetheless because it is a real life example of somebody famous who is having good success to date, it seems like, with this treatment option. So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment. It actually does help the algorithm when you guys comment, so it's very much appreciated when you do as it helps push the content to a new audience that might otherwise not see it. And um, also a big chunk of you guys are not subscribed, according to my analytics so i would appreciate it if you subscribe because uh you're not gonna get notified when i post if you don't do that and i have uh tons of other more in-depth hair loss prevention content this is just scratching the surface of what you need to know and uh what you can take into account to keep the hair on your head so if you want to see my other content in the future as well as uh, get notified about anything important that i feel is worth publishing hit the notification bell and subscribe check out my blog moreplacemoredays.com i would also advise signing up to the mailing list below because my articles are even more in depth than my videos and actually have hyperlinks to all of the clinical studies that i reference that you would otherwise not get to delve into yourself for deeper personal research should you just be subscribed to the video so anyways thank you guys for watching talk to you soon